Mourners gathered at Southampton Crematorium to pay their final respects to 47-year-old Penny Davis, who was murdered in the New Forest. The service took place at the East Chapel at 1.15 on Friday, October the 24th, 2014. But why was she murdered? Who murdered her? Well, I'm off to the location to find out, and you should come too. And let's find out where and why such a lovely lady lost her life too soon. Well, hello. And today we are in Blackfield, um, a small village on the New Forest boundaries in Hampshire. Today we are going to be taking a look at the case of Penny Davis. She's a woman that was murdered and our starting point for this is her house. Penny Davis lived here with Pete, her husband. On the 2nd of September 2014, Penny left this house here at 2.50 and made her way here to Sainsbury's in Blackfield, where she also worked. She got herself a little shopping, then she left Sainsbury's at 15.05 and made her way to her Horsefield, where we're just about to go to now. We are now taking the exact same route Penny took to go to her Horsefield while she was being followed by her murderer. So who was Penny? Well, Penny was a 47-year-old dedicated mother of five children to Sophie Alex, Georgia, Daniel and Joseph. Penny and Pete had only been married in May, just four months before her lifeless body was discovered by her beloved husband Pete. As we see earlier, Penny and Pete lived in Blackfield Village. She was a familiar face in the area, what with working in the local Sainsbury store, and she was also often seen tending to her horses in her horse field in Bewley. In her younger days, Penny was a show jumper. She had a lifelong love of horses. She had recently moved her horses to the field at Lay Green Farm, just a mile from Bewley Village, and she had just got a new horse called Tom, and life was good. On the 2nd of September 2014 was a day like no other for Penny's family. Penelope Davis, known locally as Penny, was found dead in her horse field by her husband Pete, aged 50. He had left work at 4 p.m on that day to lend Penny a hand in the horse field. On arrival, he discovered Penny had left her car door open with her handbag on display, so he was going to give her a lovingly reprimand. So as Pete entered the horse paddock, he could see two of Penny's horses in the field and he could see Penny laying on the ground with her legs to the left facing east and her head to the right facing west. At first, he thought she was sunbathing. As he tried to make sense of what he was seeing, he shouted out to her in a joking way, Hey, get up you lazy sod, but she never replied. Now realising something was wrong, he ran towards Penny, and as he got up to her, he saw blood on the side of her cheek. Then realisation set in, and suddenly it dawned on him, Penny was dead. She was pale, her blue eyes were looking straight out towards the sky. He could see she had cuts all over her, and her t-shirt was soaking wet with blood. Pete started to scream for help. Now the owner of Lay Green Farm heard Pete's cries for help. He ran to the entrance of the field. He could see Pete over Penny's body and had to drag Pete away so they could call the emergency services. The first paramedic on the scene could tell Penny was dead straight away. He said he had received a call saying a woman had fallen off a horse and was dead. But when he inspected Penny, he could see what looked like to be knife wounds. And when police arrived, he told the officers that he didn't think she had fallen off of a horse. On closer inspection, it was confirmed the cause of death to be multiple stab wounds, 14 in all, and then a murder investigation was underway. And before we get on with the investigation, thank you for making it this far. As you've made it this far, please consider subscribing, like, and comment. Now let's get on with the investigation. Detective Superintendent Paul Barton, now retired, was called in to lead the investigation. Not knowing the killer's identity, whether a stranger or someone who knew Penny, adds a growing tension in the area. Meanwhile, Penny's family is grappling with the loss of Penny, describing her as a remarkable person, a devoted mother, sister and a loyal friend. Family, along with Penny's devastated mother, are now relying on DS Paul Barton and his team to track down and put her killer to justice. Police cordoned off the area and a forensic investigation was underway. It was later established that a car key found near Penny's body was from a Vauxhall Severa and was parked in a small lay by next to her horse field. 
that had been photographed by a local man that said it looked out of place. This would turn out to be a vital clue for the police that led them to a first suspect. Soon after, police had linked the car key to the car in the photo, then linked that car to Justin Robertson, a 36-year-old man who borrowed the car from a friend. This is where it all starts to come together of why Penny was murdered. On investigating Robinson, they found he had quite a lot of contact with a certain number on his phone records a couple of weeks leading up to Penny's murder. And this would turn out to be Benjamin Carr, a 23-year-old man. He is known to Penny. It would turn out Penny had a toxic relationship with a man called Timothy Carr from about 2006 to 2012. And Benjamin Carr was Timothy's son. Penny's stepson. Benjamin Carr had a lasting hate and anger towards Penny which stemmed from when his father and Penny had a relationship. Most probably on hearing about Penny's marriage to Pete Davis and the happy new life she was leading sparked him into hatching an evil plot to kill Penny that was fueled by hate and anger towards Penny. Benjamin Carr was too much of a coward to do it himself so he needed someone to kill Penny for him. He recruited Justin Robinson who he knew for several months through dealing class A drugs. He offered Robertson £1,500 to kill Penny and Robertson accepted. Benjamin Carr planned Penny's death in great detail, ensuring he was out of the way at the time and had an alibi. Later Carr admitted arranging to be with friends and visit places with CCTV cameras so he would have an alibi at the time of the murder. Justin Robertson, 36 of no fixed abode, was a class A drugs dealer and small time criminal. Robertson denied being involved in the plan and insisted he was in Bewley on the day of the murder but he was there to scope out houses to steal from but that cruel plot quickly began to unravel when Robson had dropped the key to the car he borrowed from a close female friend and the key was found by police inches from Penny's body. The discovery of that key was the starting point of unravelling what had taken place. Although the police had traced the car key at the murder scene to Robson he still denied Penny's murder. It was found Robson had followed Penny from her home in Black field to the horse field. He then parked in the lay-by, approached Penny in the field wearing a balaclava where they had a few words and a struggle broke out. Penny managed to pull off Robson's balaclava and he continued to stab her 13 to 14 times leaving her to die. And when the scumbag returned to the car he discovered he had lost the car key so he called a friend to come and pick him up from the scene. He later asked another friend to take him back to the lay-by where he had parked to try and find the key. He still still claimed he had no idea how the key ended up next to Penny's body. And this is where the Vauxhall Severa was spotted and the photograph was taken by a local who thought it looked a bit out of place. So he pulled in behind it and took this photograph. And that was the start of the demise of the people that got convicted for Penelope's murder. We are now at the horse field in the New Forest. Just behind me in the field over here, over here, this that's the field where they found um, Penelope. Um, well, in actual fact, her husband found Penelope, Pete. He found her, he found his own wife um, dead in that horse field over there. But I'll tell you a little bit about that, but let's just pop across here and have a quick look had a few bits and pieces. In actual fact, while we're here, we can do a few lineups. One of the lineups is roughly around about here. You look at that, that's the police searching for a murder weapon just there. And if we look over here, just move up a little bit more. Roughly. Ooh, I don't know, round about here. Just there, you can see the police in the river looking for a murder weapon over there as well. Just about there. And I can't get the 
right elevation for the next one, but um, the next one, we zoom, I'll zoom in a little bit later, um, but it's just, just there, the police in the field, searching the field. And if we look over there, I can do another line up for you there, and you, you can see the tent that Penelope was under. That's obviously where her body was found, just over there. We'll take a walk up there in a minute, um, see if I can get a closer view from another angle. Let's take a walk up there now. Right, well, let's go up and have a look at an aerial view so we can get our bearings of where uh, all this took place. Just there is where Robertson parked his car. We walked up this lane here, and we're just gonna come along here now. Right there is where Penny was found dead by Pete. And Pete entered the uh, paddock around about here, which is where the gate is, and looked across and saw Penny. And buildings on the left, that's actual Lay Green Farm that owned the field. Now it's quite possible that Robertson entered the field over where he parked the car, here. Because there's a little gate there um, and he might have just made a diagonal line straight across the field there to uh, get to Penny. Anyway, let's quickly get over to where um, Penelope's body was found and do a few line-ups there and see how we go. A bit bright, but just over here, if I can get across there, So this is the spot where Penny was tending to her horses, minding her own business, enjoying herself. And Robertson came up to her and confronted her. She pulled his balaclava off and he stabbed her. Pete found her and this is where her body was found. But let's take a trip back this way because there's a few more lineups I'd like to get. Um, yeah, it's just up here by the by the farm. This is the spot where uh, Detective Superintendent Paul Barton made his appeal about the uh, murder inquiry. This is where the forensics were and the police, just at this gate here. Let's take a trip across there. They also laid flowers for Penelope there. And that's the whole field There's where Penelope's horses were. In there, and it's just, just around there is where the tent would have been that Penelope was under while the police were carrying out their forensics. That's also obviously where they found the key to the Vauxhall Severa. Incidentally, DS Paul Barton, who we just saw given his uh, interview there, he uh, actually solved the Lucy McHugh case, which happened four years later in 2018. And that video has just come up on your screen now, if you want to go and watch it. <laughs>